Hello and welcome to the walkthrough for my ninth CQ Code View Challenge. My name is Florian Volte, and in this video, I will go through a broken access control vulnerability at some sort of an, of an idol. And in this video, I'll first show you how to identify it in the source code. Then I'll show you how to exploit it. And in the end, I will show you how to remediate this vulnerability. Okay, so let's take a look at the code. So when looking at a code snip, I always like to start with the routes in case of an API, right? So we have two routes. We have the home route or the index route or whatever you want to call it. And then we have a post edit profile. So what's going on here? Looks like it's some sort of an HTML form and it talks to edit profile and provides the username property and an edit profile submit button. So looks like that's an HTML form to talk to the edit profile route. And then in edit profile, we first check if the user is authenticated and if not, we redirect to the login page. And if the user is authenticated, we first get the username from the request. And this is always something that's very interesting for me. So whenever I do secure call review and I see something like this, request form get, that means that a user or an attacker can inject that into the application. And then the next step is trying to figure out how that data is used in the app, right? So username now in terms of static analysis or taint analysis, we would call this variable tainted now because an attacker can control it. So that's very interesting. We have here, we have a way for an attacker to inject data. Okay, so next, this username flows into this function get user profile, and then we check if the user profile exists. So this is probably something to check if that user whose profile we want to edit actually exists in the database, right? And then we check if the username of the user we want to edit equals that username variable here. And if so, we update the actual profile and Otherwise, we return a user not found or mismatch. Let's have a quick look at the user profile service. So we can see here that it gets a user profile. And we need to assume that this talks to an actual database. So here it's all a bit stopped, right? But just assume that this takes in the username and gets the actual user profile from the database. And assume that this updates the actual user profile, right? And moreover, this check only returns two, but let's just assume it's a fully grown login where you provide username and password. And if that's all uh, correct, we set a, a session cookie, for example. Let's just assume that. Uh, okay, and now let's go back to the edit profile. So in summary, we check if the user is logged in, and if so, we get the username, meaning the username of the profile to edit. And then we check if the user actually exists, like that, that username. And if the provided username equals the username in the database, then we update the profile. And that, by the way, this is supposed to be an access control check, right? However, the problem is they've done the access control wrong. So what the developers are trying to do is they want to make sure that you can only update your own profile, right? Because say this app was like Facebook or whatever, you don't want to provide an opportunity to edit someone else's profile, right? But what they're doing wrong is they should take the, this username here should come from the session and not from the request. So what they should do is they should, after logging in, you have a session, right? Like just to identify you. And the session is not a tagger control. So if you log in username Bob, password, my cool password, and then on the server side, we have a session that says your username is Bob, then this is not a tagger control because you need Bob's credentials. This user needs to exist and you need Bob's credentials in order to set the session. So what they wanna do is they wanna allow you only, as said, to edit the profile if it's your own profile. So instead of creating, taking the username from the request, they should take the username from the session. So we'll talk about this a bit later in the remediation phase, but just wanted to point this out. So this is what's going wrong here. They want to allow you only to edit your own profile, but this value here where they check if it's your own profile is a tagger controlled. 
So that means they're asking me, is that actually your user profile? And as an attacker, I'm like, yeah, sure it is. Okay, let's take a look at the actual exploitation. So we have our Chrome browser here. And again, you have to keep in mind that this is a very simple, a very stout example. So what you what you should imagine here is a fully Chrome profile, like a profile page, right? So you can get added your profile. But the, the interesting part is that you can specify the username that you want to add it, right? So you would maybe have here another, another field, another text area with the new profile text. Maybe you could specify a new profile image. So on. you just have to match all this in your head. But the interesting part is that we specify the username whose profile we want to edit. And this is used as the authorization check here. So basically you want to make sure that you can only update your own profile but we ask you what the profile is and trusting the user is never a good idea. So basically to exploit this, I would just specify, I would just say my name's admin and then I would just edit their, their profile. Now here we get a user not found and mismatched because the example is very mocked, right? And only test user exists, but this is, this is the basic vulnerability. So you can edit someone's, someone else's profile, anyone, anyone else's profile because the app implicitly trusts that you would only specify your own username in that username parameter, right? And in the in a real exploitation scenario, it probably wouldn't look like this. So you wouldn't see an actual input field where you can provide the username. It would be more like that you do the actual post request to edit the profile and you would find that username parameter in there. Like it wouldn't be in the actual front end, but it would be in there and you would look at that and be like, huh, Wondering what happens if I change this to admin. It's currently my own username, right? So that's a more, more likely expectation scenario. But again, I'm trying to keep these as short as possible. So now that we talked about the expectation, let's talk about how to remediate this vulnerability. And I created a, a second file for that. So here, this is very similar to our vulnerable API. The main difference is that I've introduced a session. So now the user database is still the same. This hasn't changed. We still have this sort of home route, but I'm now as a, as a mock value, I set this session. So you have to assume again that there's a fully grown login. You have to provide the credentials and then the session is set, but I'm just trying to keep this as short as possible, right? So we have sessions now. And this means for the added profile route that we still check if the user is authenticated. And if so, we get the logged in username, meaning the username from the session. And this again, this is not attacker controlled. I mean, it somehow is, right? I guess because um, you register your username, you register your account, and you can provide, if there's no validation, you can provide whatever you want, right? So it somewhat is attacker controlled. But it's not like after registering my user account, I can't change this value anymore. So I can't provide admin or someone else's value. I can only provide my own credentials and then this is going to be my username. Okay, so this means we no longer take the username from the request. So we don't ask you anymore, hey, what's the username we want to edit? And then sort of check if the username exists as our only access control. But now we check if the username is your currently logged in user. So you're only allowed to edit someone's profile if that is your currently logged in user. And that's the, the main remediation we've done. So instead of taking that username of the user you want to add it from the request, letting the attacker specify it and be like, yeah, of course I'm, I'm admin, right? Uh, we take it from the session, meaning you have to prove that you're admin or whoever by logging in as them. And only then you are allowed to edit their profile. Yeah, and that's all I got for today, I think. So thanks thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, I would appreciate it if you could hit a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more content like that. Yeah, thanks, thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.